Do you need more practice with ggplot graphics? Yeah, you probably do. I know I did. So let's take a dive into visualizing data from the Palmer Penguin data set and reverse engineering some graphics that we see on their GitHub page with ggplot2 and patchwork. So our goal is here, we wanna reverse engineer these two graphs on the right-hand side of the screen in ggplot2. If you're familiar with this tool, you could probably recognize some of the features that we're gonna be working with here, but we're gonna try and stretch our capabilities a little bit. We're gonna practice constructing a histogram and a scatter plot with a couple of different options, and then put the graphs together that we, uh, that we generate with, uh, with Patchwork. If you're interested in this data set and aren't sure where it came from, check out the link at the bottom of the page uh, for the Palmer Penguins library. Okay, so over here in our studio, we're gonna get started with a couple of notes and, and libraries that we know we're going to need for this data visualization. So we're working with the Palmer Penguins data set and uh, we're trying to reconstruct the plot at this URL, which I will post along with the video. So we're trying to make a, a scatter plot and a histogram from the Palmer Penguins data and customize those to match what we're seeing on their GitHub page. To do this, we're gonna need the ggplot library, the Palmer Penguins library, and the patchwork library, because we're gonna try and stick these two plots together into a single image. If you haven't already done so, you're gonna to need to install Palmer Penguins, which you can do with the regular install packages. And I will post the link to the install instructions for Patchwork at the bottom of this video. It's slightly more complicated, but a fairly direct install from GitHub. And I'll give you one more tip before we get started. I went and looked before starting to record this video, for the colors that were used in the original graphics. And uh, they were these three colors, dark orange, dark orchid, and cyan four. So I'm gonna put those into a vector called penguin calls that we're gonna use later when we're making our ggplot graphs. Okay. So the first thing that we wanna do is, uh, of course, load our libraries. So we're gonna run through these make sure we have all of those. We're gonna load that color vector into R and uh, we'll check and make sure we have the penguins data table available to us. So head penguins, we run that and we could see, okay, we've got uh, several columns, species, island, bill length, bill depth, flipper length, body mass, and two more variables, sex and year for the observations in this table. So we're gonna work first with a histogram of flipper length using ggplot. So we're gonna ggplot penguins. Let's add a couple lines so you can see that. Uh, and our geom is gonna be histogram and our aesthetic x equals flipper length millimeters. And let's run that and see what we get. Okay, we get our stat bin warning using bins equals 30, pick a better bandwidth. I think this actually looks okay. Uh, it looks a little funny because we've got something weird going on here because, uh, well, we're plotting everything. And what the original graph showed was uh, each of the three species of penguins plotted in a different color. Uh, so we're gonna add a parameter inside of the aesthetic called fill, and we're gonna set that equal to the species column so that it colors, uh, colors the bars by which species of penguin that flipper length was counted in. Okay, that's pretty good. We have three different colors for Adeli, Chinstrap, and Gen 2 penguins, and we can kind of see their differences. Um, but we see uh, it gets kind of weird here in the middle because it seems to be stacking these up instead of trying to overlay them. I think let's change the alpha and uh, change the transparency and see if that's right. So outside of the aesthetic, I'm going to say alpha equals 0.4. Oh yeah, yep, so that's not overlapping those. Uh, and the reason for that is a feature, an argument inside of geom histogram called uh, identity, or no, position, sorry, position, uh, which is by default set to stack, uh, but we don't want stack, we want position identity. So the identity is gonna 
uh, it's going to plot the actual counts and overlay them instead of doing it as a stacked bar chart. And so when we're talking histogram, I don't, I don't actually know when you'd want it to be stacked because that's not how we generally read histograms. So that's pretty good. We can see the three different distributions of flipper length for our penguins here. So there were a couple of other customizations. Uh, let's see. First off, um, this, this gray background, the default ggplot theme, uh, I don't love it. And uh, the example we were trying to reverse engineer used a different theme. Uh, I'm going to try a couple. Let's try theme BW and run that. That's closer, uh, but not quite. It has a box around it. And I think the example didn't have a box. So let's try theme minimal. There we go. I think that's close. Uh, we can go back and compare, uh, but I think that's that's the closest there, right? So we just get a grid of lines. It's nice, clean, white background. I like that. All right, we're also going to want to modify the X and Y axis labels. So I'm going to do X lab uh, and capitalize flipper length and parentheses millimeters. Then I'm going to add Y label uh, is going to be the frequency. And then uh, we're going to want to add with um, at a main title with GG title that's going to say penguin flipper lengths there. So we've got now access labels, main title. Uh, the legend is still outside. That's okay for this one. We might play with that if we have time. And uh, the background looks good. Now, let's see, we still need to do the colors. So we can customize the colors by providing a scale function to ggplot. In the case of filling a histogram, we're going to use the scale fill manual for this one. And we're going to provide it three values, three colors, with one for each distribution, one for each species. And those are going to be the penguin calls vector that we set up before. All right, let's stretch that out a little bit. OK, here we go. Uh, we've got our ggplot call set up, and it seems to be working pretty well for the histogram. So I'm going to set this to an object uh, flipper histogram. And, uh, and we're going to save that for putting together with patchwork in a little bit. All right, so now we're going to make the scatter plot of flipper length and body mass. OK, so for the scatter plot, it could be basically the same idea, but we're using G on point here. And then we'll try and build out some customization. So ggplot penguins plus G on point AES. Now, it, since it's a scatter plot, we have to define an X and a Y. So our X is going to be still flipper length millimeters, but our Y is going to be body mass in grams. So let's plot that. OK, not bad. We have a, you know, a scatter plot. It looks pretty good. Um, but let's see. Let's do a couple of customizations. We know we want theme minimal now. That looked the closest to me. Um, so let's try that. Yep. Good, good. Uh, and we're going to want to color our points. So inside of our aesthetic, let's do color equals species. And that should color the points by which species they came from and add a legend. There we go. OK. Let's see. We still probably have some overlapping points. So let's add an alpha here to make those a little transparent. OK. Um, and the example we're trying to recreate also used a different shape for each one. There's a couple ways you can do this. But the way I like, because I learned to plot and base our first, is by defining a PCH value. And we're going to set that equal to species as well. So it's going to use a different shape for each of the three species. Now we've got them by shape and color. Helps us to see a little bit better which are which. 
Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, let's also, um, let's do a color scale with these values. We've got three discrete values. Uh, so we're going to do for, well, for, for scatter plots here to do it this way, we want to use scale color manual because we're using the color attribute up here in the aesthetic instead of the fill attribute. And we're going to define that as values equals penguin calls again. Okay, we need to add our access labels. We need to customize our access labels, I should say. So xlab is gonna be flipper length and our ylab is gonna be body mass. And our main title is a little more complicated now. The example we're trying to reconstruct has a main title and a subtitle. So we're going to use GG title again. And we're going to first define the main title. So our label, our main title is penguin size Palmer station. LTER, long-term ecological research. And then we're going to add an argument, comma, and a new line subtitle equals flipper length and body mass for our species. There we go. We've added our, let's make this a little bigger so we can see. That's, that's pretty good. Um, one thing I don't like about both of these graphs, let's go back and, and do the other one. Oh, let's see, we can just call it up. Flipper histogram. One thing I don't like about both these graphs is that the legend is outside of the, gra the plot window and we have some space to drop it in here. So let's modify our theme to make that work for, uh, let's do flipper histogram first. So theme, legend, the legend position, argument. And what this is going to do is you're going to give it a vector of the relative position within this graph. So I think the one that works here is um, we want it about 90% of the way across and 90% of the way up. It's going to put it in this top right corner. So we're going to do 0.9 comma 0.9. So hmm. what did I break? Oh, I miswrote <laughs> legend position. Let's run that and then flipper histogram. Aha, there we go. All right, we can do the same thing with the geom point graph, uh, but this time I think it should be in the top left corner. So that's going to look like this theme legend position equals, and this time it's going to, I'm going to put it at 0.2, comma, 0.8. So it doesn't run into the title up there. And we'll run that. There we go. All right, it probably could be, I think, now looking at it, I think it could be a 0 0.1, 0 0.8. Top left corner, top right corner for our legends. All right, now I'm going to assign this. Uh, all right, so scatter penguins is our scatter plot and flipper histogram is our histogram plot. Now we're gonna put these together with patchwork. And to do that, I think what we want to do is probably histogram, or no, uh, scatter plot over histogram. So let's do scatter, scatter penguins over flipper histogram. There we go. And in our browser over here, it looks a little bit cramped when we put this into an actual object and save it it'll it should look a little better okay so we've got so i'm going to make this a new object final plot's going to equal that arrangement of the graphs and then we're going to gg save final plot equals final plot file name equals uh, penguin plots uh, dot ping png together and it should have saved us a graph go over to files and open this up and there we go it's still a little funny we should play with our dimensions but this is the rough idea uh, i'm going to play with those dimensions a little bit and post a better 
plot with this video. But that's the idea. We've reverse engineered those two graphs and put them together and played with ggplot and learned something along the way, hopefully. Thanks for watching, everybody.